welcome back to my channel. Today I have a really fun video. I recently shared on my Instagram some of the meal prep that I do for my son. I got a lot of DMs and comments about it and so I found myself trying to message people recipes and how I do it. So I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna make my own video. And hopefully this helps you guys. I know for me, it's been really helpful just to see what has worked for other moms, how to just get ahead of things. It's really easy to kind of be stuck when you finally need to feed baby and it's like, oh my gosh, I haven't prepped anything or I ran out of my pouch food, whatever it is. It's so nice to have these little meals, these little puree meals in the freezer just for whenever you need them. So I bought these silicone baby food holders that I just pop in the freezer once I'm done with this. I also have some glass jars that I use in the fridge. So once I'm done with this video, I'll show you the process of how I store everything in the fridge for the next day. So I'll just get straight into it. We have one, two, three, four, five easy recipes, and I think you guys will like them. Let me know if you try these and your baby likes them. My baby loves these ones, so hopefully yours does too. Here are all my ingredients and the printed out recipes. I love printing these out beforehand and getting each ingredient placed out here so that I'm not running back and forth to the fridge or to my phone to check the recipe or grab an ingredient that I forgot. It's nice to just have everything organized before you start. The first recipe we're gonna start with is our sweet potato puree. I love making this because Jetty absolutely loves this meal. It's the first vegetable we were actually able to get him to eat. And if you're starting your baby on purees for the first time, I would highly recommend sweet potato because most babies like sweet potato, at least in my experience. So the first thing I did was I just peeled on my sweet potatoes and now I am cutting them up into cubes. Now I'm adding a little bit of olive oil, spreading that around, and then I'm going to bake this on 400 for 25 minutes. Next is our steamed roasted carrots recipe. It's a very similar process to the sweet potatoes. First I'm just cutting off the ends of the carrots and then I'm going to peel them, cut them into smaller pieces, and then I will add some water before I put them in the oven. You can either add a silicone mat or some parchment paper to your tray before you put in your carrots so that you have somewhere for the water to go because you're gonna steam these carrots in the oven. Now we're going to bake these carrots for 50 to 60 minutes on 400 degrees. You can also cover the carrots with foil. I didn't do that and it still tasted great, but that's an option. Next is our chicken, butternut squash, and cauliflower puree. The first thing I'm grabbing is my parchment paper and foil. You could also use the baking tray silicone mats, but I ran out of them, so that's why I'm using parchment paper for this one. First, I am lining my baking sheet with parchment paper. Then I'm gonna place my cauliflower and butternut squash onto the baking sheet. Next, we're gonna place our chicken on a piece of tin foil, and then you just wrap it up like a present so no moisture can escape while it's baking. 
This will go in the oven for 20 to 25 minutes at 400 degrees. Then halfway through, we'll flip the vegetables and the meal will be completely done when it can be pricked by a fork and the chicken is cooked all the way through. Next is our broccoli and peas recipe. This is one that honestly, I have to give my son a little bit of fruit with this because it's just a lot of green vegetables, which I totally get. I wouldn't want to just eat green vegetables. So I usually sweeten this recipe with a little bit of mango or a little bit of applesauce when I actually serve it to him. For this recipe, we're going to steam it on the stove top. I love this little steaming pot set that I have. It makes it really easy. So I'm just filling the bottom pot with water and then I have my steamer basket and we're going to cover and steam this for 15 to 20 minutes or until fork tender. I saved the best for last. This is Jetty's all time favorite baby puree. It's our cinnamon applesauce. Honestly, my husband and I will eat this as well because it is so good. It just reminds me of fall. It makes me want to make some sort of apple bake or pie or something like that. It's just very delicious. So the first thing I'm going to do for this is peel all of my apples and then I'm using my apple core to clear out the insides. Taking a little break from that because my Alexa went off, it's time to flip over the veggies in our chicken bake, check on the chicken. It's still not ready, so back in the oven it goes. Since this process does take a while, I like doing it on Sundays because it's just a chill, lazy day and I can take my time making Jetty's food. Sometimes it feels sort of therapeutic. I'll throw on some music or a podcast, just anything that can make this process feel more fun. Now I'll take my chopped apples in the saucepan and add some water and cinnamon. Once that's done, I will bring this to a boil and once it's simmering, you lower the heat and cover to cook for 20 or 15 minutes or until the apples are cooked totally through and very soft. Now that everything is cooking and baking, it's time to pull out our silicone ice cube trays and our glass jars. And then once everything's done cooking, we can let it cool and start transferring everything into these fun little containers. Today I'll be using my Vitamix to blend all of these purees. If you have an immersion blender, that works as well. So we're starting off with the sweet potatoes and I found that I have to add quite a bit of water to my sweet potato puree. Otherwise, it's more of a mash and for me, it's a little too thick of a consistency. But you could just continue to add water or breast milk until you get the consistency that your baby likes. Now that that's done, I can transfer the sweet potato puree into our glass jars and our ice cube trays. These will last in the freezer for up to three to six months. Onto our broccoli and peas. Those are nice and steamed. So throwing those in the Vitamix. Again, you can add water to this. The peas actually make this consistency pretty good because there's a lot of water in it from the steaming. So I didn't end up adding any water to this puree, but you could add some if you wanted it to be even a little more runny. Look at these yummy, steamy cinnamon apples. Oh my gosh, this just makes my mouth water. They're so yummy, I could just devour them exactly like this, but I have to blend them up. These are for Jetty. So I am throwing them into the Vitamix and I'm gonna go through the same process, blending these up and throwing them in our fun little containers.
Next are our steam roasted carrots. These are nice and tender now, so I'm going to transfer these carrots with the water that's in here as well into the Vitamix, and then I'm gonna go ahead and blend these up If you're using a blender to make your purees, sometimes you'll have to take the lid off and sort of stir things around to make sure there's no big chunks in your puree and then mix it again. But that's what really helps make sure that you're getting the right consistency all the way through. Last item for blending is our chicken, butternut squash, and cauliflower recipe. So I am just taking out the chicken, doing a light shredding of this before I throw it in the blender. And then once I'm done with that, I will toss all of this in the blender, add a little bit of water, and mix it up. the meal prep magic happens so I hope you enjoyed this video this is about two weeks worth of meals so just to give a little rundown of why I have different containers these I will put in the refrigerator so I like to have these set up in the fridge for the next few days just kind of ready to go and then these will go in the freezer I love these little silicone ice cube trays because you can just pop them out one at a time and so whenever I pop these out I'll do this probably the night before I'm going to use it. I'll pop one of these into this glass jar and then throw this in the fridge. So the next day it's dethawed and it's just ready to go, ready to eat. So these go in the freezer, these go in the fridge. That's my little system that's been working for me. So I'll have these links below. Um, I think they're from We Sprout and I love these. I like the colors too. But um yeah that's it for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed it and maybe found some new recipes found some inspo for meal prepping it's been such a helpful hack for me as a busy mom to just do this on a sunday and now i have my meals for a couple weeks it makes a big difference enjoy these recipes and i will see you in my next video bye